them out of the script, <laughs> threw it in the air, and he's like, we're not doing this anymore. We're yeah. just not. He did. We're going to do what we want. And he picked up the director and carried her around the room screaming. Yes, he did. He really did. It was, he was great. And I don't think that would ever happen on um, Hannah Montana well, or, you know, any of those shows I don't, now. I don't know. You, we're not there, but I doubt it. I don't think so. No. It was wild Devo. and fun. We had Devo. We had Devo on the show. I mean, how cool oh is my that? Gosh, that was really we had an incredibly cool music supervisor. Yes. Yeah, and in fact, I remember him coming one day, Steve Smith, coming to, uh, to work one day and saying, oh, I, I heard this really great girl in the clubs in New York, and she's going to be really big, and I, I think we should have her on the show. Because we had a, a set that was called uh, The Grease, right? Yeah, that was the... Uh, little cafeteria, yeah, cafeteria kind of place. It was like a, a, a diner, shop. Diner, 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 that's the word. And right. um, there was always music piped in in there, and so we try to get you know really cool bands to be represented. And anyway, it turns out this was Madonna, Madonna that he was talking yeah, about. And we didn't we didn't get her. No, I think they we, picked we somebody else. Got, did we get that the Stray Cats? No, we didn't get them. That's right. Oh, we that almost was such got a them. bummer, such a crush on Brian Setzer. Well, you know. But I'm grateful now that I never had anything related to Stray Cats tattooed on me anywhere, because that would be embarrassing that, now. That wouldn't be good. Yeah. Well, maybe not Brian Setzer. He's still really cool, but. He is. I have a friend who used to manage him, actually. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Alex. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, yeah, and we had Devo, and that day that Devo was there, that was just... That was a wild day. They played for uh, Buffy's Bat Mitzvah. <laughs> <laughs> no, of course. Muffy. What did I say? Muff Buffy. Muffy Tepperman, right? You said Buffy. I didn't that's mean That's the Vampire Buffy. Slayer. Yeah, she has that's nothing a different to do show. with square pegs. Muffy. How could I say Buffy? Muffy's Bar Mitzvah. Been of course it was Muffy. We're old yeah, and we that kind of forget now. Alzheimer's starts to kick in. That all was it, Buffy? Buffy's bar mitzvah. It rhymes with Buffy. Anyway, I have to I have to say one thing that's like one of my favorite things about Square Pegs. Um, there was one one well, Halloween this year that year. Uh, there was a little girl in a park, and uh, one of my friends asked her. She was all dressed up, and she had kind of the hair like this. And she had, you know, the mini skirt with polka dots and big tacky jewelry, very 80s. And uh, my friend said, who are you for Halloween? And she said, I'm Jennifer DiNuccio from Square Pegs. And that was like, that's, that's still, still, that's like one of the biggest compliments, coolest things that's ever happened. That is very cool. Yeah. This past summer, I was in the south of France, and I was... Um, uh, like on the French Riviera, you know, and I was in an internet cafe and sitting around talking to some locals and this one guy who's a marine biologist from the States who lives down there doing research in the Mediterranean um, said, what do you do in the States? And I said, oh, I, I do voiceover. That's what I do now. And he said, uh, oh, have you always done that? I said, I actually, I did a series in the 80s. And he said, what was it? And I said, square pegs. And he went nuts. He went nuts. This guy is like a marine biologist. He's like this genius guy who monitors global warming and stuff. He went nuts, and um, it's really funny how... I was in Indonesia, and I saw Square Pegs. It was dubbed in French, which was very bizarre. Very funny. Yeah. But, you know, again, um, I don't think... Speaking of Halloween, I just want to say that I had a line, and it was, Halloween, white people walking around, and she's just not my idea of fun. <laughs> I hate that. <laughs> so, like, I mean, the lines are really funny. White people dress up in sheets. <laughs> I mean, that's a really funny plot. I mean, it was kind of edgy. Well, see, that's the thing. I think people who never saw the show don't realize uh, just exactly how cool and edgy it was. They don't. They I didn't know how cool and edgy it was. They think it was, it was like, over my head. You know, Saved by the Bell or something like that. No. It wasn't. It was cutting edge. It was genius. It was a year ahead of its time. That's, that's Ann Beats. <sighs> yeah, and everybody else who was writing, too. Well, Andy Borowitz. And, and Janice Hirsch, Janice and Hirsch. a lot of really great, yeah, writers. Really great writers. I didn't know the show had been canceled until um, I think the lineup for the new fall season <laughs> came out and we weren't on it. And um, I was in shock. I think I called uh, one of the executive producers, and, or he called and, you know, with condolences or something. It was like someone died. Well, you know, someone did. That was hard. I, I think there was not a lot of... Uh, shock on my part because towards the end of the run things had kind of been I think the network really felt like it wanted to be more involved with the show and I think the fact that we were so physically far away from the network was hard for them I think they really wanted to feel like we've got all these crazy writers we've got all these you know mad geniuses running around and there's nobody kind of you know making sure that they don't 
tell a joke that's not all right and you know waste everybody's time or whatever they were thinking so right. I think uh, it was kind of like you know is it is it really worth all the trouble and um, I wasn't really particularly shocked what I was really sad about though obviously was the fact that they had finally gotten our hair right <laughs> they had finally gotten our and our lighting right <laughs> they'd finally gotten our hair our makeup and we our lighting finally right. looked good we on looked the show good by the last show <laughs> we looked really good and then it was over but um, no no of course it was really sad was really because sad. you know people say this but you really do become a family and everybody um, you, you spend so much time yeah. during the day together and I think that was the hardest thing you always you know I, I think all of us were, were so young that we didn't realize that a lot of us were never going to see each other again. You kind of think, okay, well, all right, the show's canceled, but it doesn't yeah. matter. We're still all going to be friends. Right. And uh, Claudette and I really uh, managed to maintain that. We really bonded, and we just, uh, we be our friendship became our real life. Yeah. And so, and, um, except it, we're not really caught up in hair and makeup, and you don't say like all the time, and I don't say, girl, no. I hate that all the time. So, you know, no, we don't. Than that. No, no, no. And, and actually, you know, I was a square peg in school big time, so to play that character was really fun for me. And um, <laughs> we talked about that all the time because I also, in my high school yearbook, it said Claudette Wells be, will be grow, no, it said Claudette Wells will become a professional wallflower. That's what a nerd it I was. did? Professional wallflower. <laughs> so yeah, ridiculous. Yeah, I went back to the reunion. I not even they imagine had to that. No, they, I made them eat those words. Well, I'm not a wallflower. No, she's not. She I'm goes to the right. south of France and to the Riviera and <laughs> yeah, talks really to marine biologists and, and stuff. I a lot, and I don't, I'm, don't hold up the wall and blend in. I have a 15-year-old daughter who is not familiar with square pegs, so just because until now it hasn't really been around to watch. And she's got a really awesome sense of humor. She's got this. She's got the square peg sense of humor, which is kind of dry and maybe a little bit cynical and very smart. And I was just, we were cracking up the other day. She's never even seen the show, and I was telling her about a scene. Um, and I don't know if this will seem funny to you or not, but there was a. Do you remember when we had all the international children that came? <laughs> yes. And um, they were all in the bathroom, and. Um, my character was putting lip gloss on and said something like, does anyone have any lip gloss? And there were all these little girls and they're, you know, little girls in these international costumes and they all hold up their lip gloss. <laughs> and my character said something like, you're really small. <laughs> something, something simple something really, like that. Yeah. And it was just so funny and so just just off the wall and, and bizarre and there was so much of that kind of humor that, that went on and well, you know yeah and I remember in that episode my zinger of a line uh, was that I had to walk Sister Nigeria to the bathroom <laughs> <laughs> and my line was in response to LaDonna you walk with Sister Nigeria my line was I'll walk with but I won't wipe <laughs> and I can't, I can't believe I said that on television <laughs> and then it made it in and it did <laughs> I'll walk with, but I won't wipe. <laughs> what kind of a kid in school says, you know. Anyway, those, you know, <laughs> Sister Nigeria. You called me Sister Nigeria once when I came back from uh, a sun tanning trip. <laughs> you actually said you look like Sister Nigeria, Claudette. You're so dark, you got a tan. You know, I, I guess I did, Sister Nigeria. We, yeah. That was a funny episode. Do you remember the time that, you know, that we were funny. doing the football episode and you had the, the black stuff to put under here? And you said, you said something about, what was your line? I don't know. You said, what is that stuff called that you put on your cheeks and you put on? Cheek blackening stuff. You said, oh, I thought it was shadow. <laughs> I just remember it was like, it, you had put it all over the tops of your eyes. That was so funny. And there, there was that one scene with the red, uh, let, there was like a red suede coat in the grease. <laughs> yeah. And you're like, girl, that jacket is hot. It is burning my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> and that, my, my character says, you know, I really like it except for, for this. this. And it had one of those plastic tags on it from the <laughs> store. I really like it except for this. <laughs> Just really so, lame. Sound like really a frog. Lame. It was oh, very was funny. It was funny. It was very funny. And all these years later, we can still. We're think laughing. It's funny. We're laughing. It was. It was very funny. Yep. It was great. It was great. Some to be of it was not with great. Some of it was hard. Really hard. Hard work. Hard. It was hard. I sound like George Bush. It was hard. Hard work. <laughs> But we, um, you know, because we were not the miners, so we were the ones who really had to work the hours. And I think, in retrospect, you know, it's good that we were younger. 
because it, it really, oh. really took a lot out of you to... Uh, yeah, and I think when we did the football show, we had to have that full football gear on. It was 104 <laughs> degrees in Norwalk right. in August. And I had the flu, and I had like 102 temperature. That's right, yeah, I remember that. And, I, and you know, we're doing all this running. I would die if I did that. I mean, and, you know, and I would lie down in between takes, and they kept giving me, like, NyQuil and... Gatorade. Gatorade, and, oh. Wake up! Yeah. And, and uh, whenever the extras were mean to us, I'd walk, and I'd step on their feet. <laughs> step on their toes, because they, they were... They this, the worst, out. worst day for me was the day that my character had to kiss my boyfriend. Because I had never done that before on film, and uh, I was terrified. It was like, all right, what do you do? How do you do it? You know, what's required? And um, John Did you Cleary, really kiss him? yeah, John Cleary was playing my boyfriend. He was having all the same fears, and uh, and uh, was not expressing them to me. We probably could have helped each other if we had talked, but you know, we were both acting like I've done this before. 